Okay, this begins the, this begins the work session. Um, there's no cause for public hearing, and there are no old items of discussion on the agenda. But I did want to spend some time talking about what the 2020 objectives and projects that we would like to accomplish. I believe I sent an email to advance asking if you think about some of those things that you'd like to tackle. I'm aware of some of them. Um, I figured we could just write them on the board. Um, these are things that uh, are almost like the big hairy audacious goals. Nice cars. That sure, that'd be great. You know, you better know what I'm doing now. It's embarrassing. These are as close to the board. It doesn't have the list. It's why I'm the secretary. Your secretary, exactly. Honestly, it'll be like I should be drawing this with the crayons. So, these are the things that we'd like to accomplish in 2019 make a huge impact in. Uh, for starters, I know that HR and I would like to work on completing a complete overhaul of the employee handbook. I've been working on, on that every other Friday or so with HR over the last I don't know, six months maybe. And I want to get it done in 2020. What's that? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I know Pam is working on the record storage. Um, I know they're all interested in broadband. Uh, it kind of applies to them. <laughs> For the most part, as you probably are aware, we've had task forces that are one of us that initiates it kind of spearheads it. In this case, I know all three of us care a lot about it, um, so I would say we can all participate in that. Mm -hmm. Housing for intellectual disabilities and mental health kind of falls under you, kind of. Well, I think that's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. I was going to say, do we want to make all of these person specific, or do we want to say these are our top ten, and then over time kind of indicate whether or not one or the other is the? Yeah, I mean, I, some, I don't know necessarily. In some cases, making through this with eight ten. So like the yeah, involved right. co-working space is another one that I'm going to be very tied into this year. Sure. You know, it's kind of my baby, so. I welcome your involvement. Not at trust, all. But. <laughs> So that would be another one for me to be. Did you say that was a person? Intellectual disabilities and mental health. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like, as a for instance, like one of mine is going to be obviously like the recycling bit. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, is like on some projects, it's just one person's. Passion. passion focus and so right. their job is to bring like a, a, a plan or a project to the group that, that everybody can review and then either adjust or change or mm -hmm. it was, oh, so go ahead. Well another one that either I or board should consider is um, some sort of effort and research into expanding or augmenting the black fly. Um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you could make probably make that number one and you can make everybody in this county the car goes down the street. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then I had my um, Interval Micro Loan program. Your handwriting is a little better than that. <laughs> um, and, and the thing is, is you shouldn't feel like you have to, like, you know. <laughs> Not gonna do that. Good. <laughs> yeah. well, I, mean, I should throw something out there. Yeah, no, I think that, um, you know. It, it won't take long, believe me. <laughs> You'll go to a couple of those meetings, you'll be like, hey, Well, this is great. and the thing, I've done a little bit of, you know, uh, research and, and uh, got all of the bargaining unit agreements and the budget and the financials, so that's something I'll continue to, to review and make sure I get a good understanding of before I. In particular, yeah. <laughs> all the finance stuff, and I think specifically um, stuff. <laughs> subcategory retirement funds stuff. 
with this. Sure. She's got a lot of knowledge related to that. And I know that's why I'm getting the pushing. I think that I have experience in also, and I don't know that that's here at the county level, but at CCAP, um, you know, I recognize that the, all the counties in the Commonwealth are self funded. Um, and that that's, has been something that I've dealt with in the past as well. And I think that's only about, you know, looking at our coverages and those types of things. But I have a lot of experience in that. Um, when I worked at Warren General Hospital, actually, we created one of the first self-funded insurance plans for um, small um, rural hospitals. So, so health care. <laughs> well, and that's, that's not that would be very complicated. We've, that's the Rubik's Cube that we've been trying to um, fix. Right. Hmm. Well, Heath Health. Heath Care. Management of the snack bar. So, <laughs> um, another thing that I think we should at least ask ourselves if we want to uh, get involved is related to our oil and gas producers and their challenge in getting their brine treated or otherwise dealt with. Obviously that is something that I imagine Trisha would be the subject matter expert on. Um, it, but it's something that has really hurt many of our conventional uh, producers in this county as well. And I would say, you know, treatment options in general. Yeah. Because that's a huge or, or uses. I mean, maybe it doesn't need to be options and uses. Yeah. Okay. So it is, and that's across the Commonwealth, but of course it affects us here because we have such a large group of independent producers. Um, this will be a quick project, but we need to finalize what we're doing with the elections. Right? I believe we decided more or less to just produce more equipment, right? Well, I mean, one of the issues is that, um, you know, obviously Lisa's uh, mother passed away, and so she's been dealing with that, so her ability to do research and put information together. I mean, at this point, I feel, I, I, I still would like to do a deep dive into the paper uh, situation. I think the problem is going to be just logistically right now with everything going on is getting it together in, in a timely fashion and still being ready for the presidential primary, which is going to be here before anybody knows it. So I think the way it's going to work out is basically we're, we're going to, because technically now we're the elections board, right? I mean, I was going to say uh, two things. One, I don't know if you have the elections board on your list of boards. I believe so. It's on his, his list. Okay, yeah. Yes, so you're now having taken office the board of elections. Thank you for I mean, there's, just, there's nothing, as the election board, I mean, there we could have advisory positions. That's true. <laughs> we can't appoint this. <laughs> That's okay, you're still the board. <laughs> I was just doing what the board told me. I did do some preliminary research. Uh, there's, there's some statutory guidance that it's probably going to be recommended that we just get additional machines. As not, it's not impossible to go to more paper, but there's a there's a legal threshold that we would have to meet to justify um, taking away the machines. It would be easier from a legal standpoint to just add the additional machines. Was there a requirement in each district to have two machines? Is that how it worked, or was that something that we just distributed evenly? We in the situation <coughs> that you're required at minimum to have one. Okay, sure. And um, my understanding, and honestly, you two probably know. But it was just, that one. was, you know, there's a contract that the county had with Dominion right. for a negotiated amount of machines, mm -hmm. and the distribution was, you know, as the board of elections saw fit with the guidance of Ms. Rivet. Okay, so it wasn't anything from the Commonwealth that came? No. 
I mean, if we were able to take up, well, I guess this is a board of elections conversation, never mind. <laughs> no, I, I think that the, the, the question that actually has to be answered, because my assumption is, or I, let's put it this way, we're probably going to just have 86 machines, we're going to have 96 machines. The question now is, is where we're going to put them, because these machines require more space than the old ones did, unfortunately. So I don't think that Lisa's going to be able to stay in that office over there, or, or her equipment isn't going to be able to stay in that office over there. It's going to have to be put somewhere. And I think that that's not a discussion that we should have today, per se, but we have to think about what we're going to do with that. So, so election slash storage of the equipment. What was that, Ron? <laughs> You have she was prepared. <laughs> well no, I, I was just thinking for, for not really, I just, well, I was just thinking for Trisha's benefit. Like if you have a map with the offices and like who's in them, I mean can we put that together and then circulate it and then maybe make a trip up so that so the we all have to like know where everybody is because I, I think that would be good. And then and then maybe we'll get a trip up there and do like a whole there you go. Perfect. All right. Um, last one that I have on my list that was written down, which is that I would like to at least personally focus uh, some effort onto programming for inmate reentry. Judge Skirda and I met at a CCAP friendly conference, and uh, she gave me some a list of suggested things that we could, well, that, yeah, that's another thing is the radio project's not completely done, so, um, yeah, I, I looked at that on her, I mean, uh, anyway, we're looking at the Stepping Up initiative. Many of the steps have already been done by um, the sport. Nevertheless, uh, there were a couple things that needed to be updated because they were a few years old, and I would do that through the, with, in conjunction with the CGEM, of course, um, but I would love to put some time now. Yes, the EMS task force too, thank you. So mine is um, reconstituting the marketing and uh, redevelopment task forces and to um, carry out more of the initiatives outlined in the reports that we put together. I have a meeting with Jim Decker today to discuss specifically the marketing initiative and then with redevelopment is, you know, like addressing blight and some of the other issues related to that and redevelopment. Okay. How about conference of plan? Is that on your trip? Really, that needs to be... Really nervous about that. The little comprehensive is <laughs> beside it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the comprehensive plan is something that we should all be yeah, okay. hyper involved in. Just because that, all, all of our, a huge chunk of our grant funding and everything, like all of our projects that we're going to try to pitch to the state and some other things are going to come out of that. So, okay. And basically, are you familiar with that at all? Like, so, a little bit? setting their quarterly goals for this year. But when I do, I'll bring that back to the board. Otherwise, that looks like a pretty full list, an achievable list, but it's fairly full for me. Okay. Anything else you three can think of? Or us, you two? <laughs> So I think um, I think that 
maintenance is going to have to be an ongoing discussion at some point, like this month, we'll have to sit down and have a conversation about, um, you know, because we're going to have the parking lot redone in the spring, so that's probably one of the main projects, but we're going to basically have to have a conversation about the rest of the rehab of this building and the historic society. Um, just because that building needs work done, um, this needs the rest of the painting done, and the, the way I'm looking at it is, is well, it's, it's most of the maintenance that's remaining is, is to some degree cosmetic. Some of it's needed, but, but most of it's uh, you know um, stuff that can be pushed off until next year. But it's the idea of planning for the funding and trying to get grant funds and other things like that. If we're going to do that, we need to like basically plan it in the spring and then get it ready for the next year. Great, good, great. That's great. Good start. All right, anything else? Very well. Um, so that takes us through to the next commission meeting. That's Wednesday, this Wednesday the 8th. On the agenda, there's only three things. Um, one, I just added the postponement of the tax duplicates designation of the industrial development organization. Uh, and those were things very simple and quick. And appointment of Scott Rose as the hazard mitigation whatever person. Um, <clears throat> so that would be very light and easy for sure to be, I think. Uh, um, one thing that I wanted to discuss with you just, just initially is that um, I'm going to have to forward you and start having more conversations about the farm colony um, just to get that going again, just because um, we uh, Okay, that, that whole thing kind of stalled a little bit, and you know, with the election and everything else. And now that the new year started, we're going to have to mm -hmm. iron that out. What we're going to do with it? Um, oh, the baseball. No, sorry, the baseball. Oh, oh, oh. The, the farm calling baseball fields up on. Okay. Up on. Yeah. So are you familiar with that? No. Okay. Okay. So um, get excited. This yeah. is a very excited time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get out of your espresso. <laughs> Somebody, something. Oh, no. Um, so the the um, youth baseball league, not really Babe Ruth has operated up there, um, built their own facilities and materials, and basically utilized the space. There's been no formal lease with that organization since Babe Ruth dissolved. Um, they are now just now changing over to little league again, like uh, and and so they're in even essentially different organization, um, uh, the same folks involved. Basically, we initiated a conversation with them to have an official lease agreement that would be, you know, like a buck, and they would, they would outline all of the liability issues with it. Um, since then, there's been, you know, the, there's been a lot of different discussions about how to handle that. Um, they've pitched taking over the property altogether. Um, they, you know, and then we have this lease that's kind of flowing around. And one of the there were a couple issues with it related to originally when we gave it to them, it was like I think a three year lease or something like that. And they felt like that was too short of a time frame for them to because they're building, they're constructing things up there that that's not enough security for them to feel like they, you know. So then the question was how long we extend it and that kind of stuff. But, my point is, is I think to have any kind of a formal discussion about it, we need to share all that information and then review it kind of as a group and then kind of figure out where we go from there. I just, I want to throw that out there as an item because we need to make some kind of decision on it within the next few weeks, or next month or so, I would say. Okay. I have a, I have a short update. I think it's a positive update on the, um, the Madison Avenue litigation. Yes. Yes. Um, I received word I haven't seen the order yet, but um, the county filed a motion to dismiss the district attorney's office and the individual district attorney defendants from that case. That motion was not opposed by anyone. So uh, Judge Sturry granted that order. So uh, right now, the only parties left in the litigation are the county and Joyce Miles. And uh, my intent is to, now that the order's been entered for that, to uh, make a motion for some conference. Um, which would be attended by myself for the county, Joyce Miles, and or council, 
and it also asks the city of Warren, uh, city of Warren uh, court can't compel the third party that's not part of the settlement uh, to, to the, the litigation to attend those. Um, we follow the case and they, they're pursuing a lien against Joyce Miles. Um, so uh, we'll have to meet in executive session sometime in the near future to discuss um, what the, how the county would like to approach that, that settlement conference. I have a few ideas I think that could be productive, but that's news as of this morning that that work was under. Very good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Commissioners, well, any other department of community updates? <coughs> Excuse me, I have to plan to close my office January the 22nd. We have a big meeting down in Pittsburgh at the <coughs> regional VA office, the federal building, to discuss some of the problems going on with the VA and attend a, a meeting on the new pension center requirements. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Commissioner schedule. This week, I think, is pretty normal. There's obviously the commissioner meeting and salary board on Wednesday. Oh, please serve it as um, mother's viewing is tomorrow. Yes. Um, I think that's about it for me. Was it an early one? No, I'm not Okay. Do you have a copy of the initiative? Three to six tomorrow, <laughs> and the service is 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Yeah. So we will not be holding a work session on next Monday, the 13th, as I will be in a nice house training, and at least one or two of you will be working in the Northwest Cash Mission Association. Do you want to go with that? Sure. Okay. Some other time this year, no, it, uh, this oh, is on oh, Monday. Yeah. It's up in the area. Yeah. So it's Erie's turn to host the yeah. minutes. Uh, how many counties is it again? 15, 16? Yeah, you know, that was 16. 16, yeah. Uh, in the Northwest, and it's a good place to meet sure. the fellow commissioners. So. And this will be the first meeting of the year, so I'm sure that there'll be new people that are in the so. mm -hmm. Okay, and then immediately after this meeting, we are signing the tax anticipation note documents that we are with approved. So please take around. Um, I think that's it for this. Do I have any agenda? Oh, don't forget the Ross Board meeting on Thursday. All right. <clears throat> any general discussion or public comment this time? Well, I'm going to discuss a few things about your recycling program. Okay, Mr. Mortensen? Yes. yes. Very good. Uh, sure, we have a few minutes left, but I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going to presume that Mrs. Durbin hasn't received a copy of what you... I am very confident she's not. Okay. Yeah, so. Sure. Um, it's got five or six sections in it. Um, Would you please stand this to so you don't get lost? Um, first section, Mr. Everson asked me for some information on the first page here. Uh, the first section basically covers uh, uh, the involvement of our family in recycling for the last 60 years. And we've done post-consumer for the last 30 and have run a public drop-off consistently twice a month for the last 20 years. Um, uh, the second uh, item on the front page uh, talks about our facility, a little bit about our facility. Uh, the third item talks about some major pieces of equipment we employ in the system there, um, which is uh, those two items there, the facility and the, and the uh, equipment uh, are the uh, prime investment interest. Uh, at the bottom of the page, uh, which should be on the top of the next page, is a statement that says, Morrison is recycling is disappointed with a couple of recent developments in recycling discussion in the county. The first one was we are not invited to participate in the advisory council. That studied a lot of details about recycling in the county. The second thing is we are also not uh, informed of any opportunities to recycle your office paper. And uh, we didn't have a clue what was happening until we read about it in the paper. Um, the next item there just 
basically makes a couple of statements about how we are observing how the county is, uh, is uh, positioning themselves to start a recycling enterprise and that uh, due to the fact the county has relatively limited recycling uh, opportunities, uh, we feel this would be uh, quite invasive in, in our interest. Uh, and uh, basically made the, uh, the comment here that uh, if, you know, if the ship is going to sail without us uh, in the capitalistic system that we in, in, are engaged in in the county, that the county should buy our business. Uh, and the last thing that we talked about here a little bit was the uh, discussion about Warren County's recycling facility and how we feel that uh, um, any discussion about uh, focusing that primarily in the Starbury warehouse is without merit. Uh, the facility in Starbury, uh, as we said here, might be a good storage facility, but for public access, access for trucks, uh, the overall, you know, recycling uh, uh, operation, opportunities, growth, um, all the criteria to go in that business. That, this, that Starbreak facility does not fit at all. And since uh, I don't have a clue what your recycling uh, uh, consultant told you, uh, I'm just bouncing around the outside what we see and what we, what we know about running a business. That, that facility is uh, definitely not going to uh, be adequate. And we proposed for a long time that a collection facility be built in the North Horn area where uh, a large shared population finds themselves anyways for other reasons and um, could operate uh, a much more uh, you know, flexible scale than I offer and uh, would be uh, a less expensive uh, alternate for collection than what you're doing right now. If you had fish crabs, then how would you like to uh, either respond or get back with uh, take, take this under advisement? This is the second, I think, time, maybe third, that Smarts and showed up at our meeting to have this discussion. Obviously, I've responded to it previously, so I don't feel like I need to respond to it again. Yeah. I'll have a conversation with them. All right, very well. Um, so now, Commissioner Durbin has your letter. And sure. Uh, we've heard your, your concern. Anything else? Oh, no, that's great. Thank All right, very good. Then, uh, anything else from the department heads? Very good. And for the first session.